Guitar and Excel spreadsheet creation mapping the path to fretboard enlightenment, part number seven. Get ready and don't fret or get bored because using Excel to learn the fretboard is exciting. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you're starting with a blank worksheet, you may wanna begin back there. However, if you do have access to this workbook, we got multiple tabs down below, including the example tab, which is the end result, the finished product, the answer key, if you will, multiple starting point tabs, which represent the starting points that line up to the different sections of video Video presentations as we work through the long practice problem and the blank tab where we started with a blank worksheet and are continuing with the project at this point in time quick recap of what we have done thus far we started out thinking about the musical alphabet in letters a a sharp b c c sharp d uh, d sharp e f F sharp G and then it starts and then G sharp and then it starts over again it's difficult to actually say the musical alphabet like with the music uh, alphabet song that we're all used to because the sharps and flats mess it up but note that you can number those by saying A is 1, A sharp is 2, B is 3, C is 4, uh, C sharp 5, D is 6, and so on. And then it's really easy to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Therefore, we are making the argument that it's useful both for Excel as for your own memorization and progression with guitar or whatever theory you're looking at uh, to assign a number uh, to each of the notes which we're going to call an absolute number as opposed to relative numbers that we'll then talk about we have to keep those separate in our mind there's no getting around it it's going to get confusing no matter what so we're then going to combine those together so now we've got the number absolute number and uh, absolute letter representing a note and then we took the relative numbers according to a scale using this as our keynote this is a four representing a C. So the C is usually the first scale people learn because it doesn't have any sharps and flats in it. So we'll use that four. If we name the four, we use our pattern of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, which in terms of numbers is two notes, two notes, one note, two note, two note, two note, and uh, one note. And we use that to build our C major uh, scale. So we start with a C, two notes away. Uh, we go to a D, two notes away, to an E, two notes away, to an F, to a G, to an A, to a B, which happen to all have no sharps and flats. Why? Because we're using the C scale. If we change this, of course, to some other scale, like, uh, like I don't know, a B scale, then we're going to have a whole lot of sharps and flats that we have to deal with over here. But from a number perspective, it's quite straightforward, right? If I say, oh, 12, that's a G sharp. That's a scary thing. But it's just a 12. It's just another note that happens to be a sharp or a flat given the nature of how we constructed the alphabet. But we'll go back to a four because it has no sharps and flats. And that's usually the starting point that we, we use to build things. And then we built our little worksheet over here, which helps us to then populate the, the notes in our scale and it gives us then whether or not we're going to have a major or minor chord that we build off of each of these notes in the scale so the first note in the scale is a c i would call that uh, relative position one relative position one relative note one because it's not absolute note one we're not talking about an a note in other words we're talking about a uh, f uh, relative position one of the C major scale, which is a C, right? Relative position two of the scale is a absolute note of a D or six, right? A six or a D, absolute note six, relative position two of the C major scale. Relative position three, relative note three of the C major scale uh, is a note, absolute note eight, unchanging note eight, 
uh, or an E. Relative position four is uh, note nine or F. Relative position five of the C major scale is note 11 or G. Relative position six of the C major scale is note one or A and seven, note three or B. It also tells us whether or not we're gonna build a major or minor uh, chord around it, which are generally thought of as the first three notes. And uh, so the, the, the lower case letters show us that it's going to be minor, uppercase, major. And we can define that looking at the three here. The three interval tells us whether it's minor or major because the other two notes would be the same, whether it be major or minor. And so this interval represents the interval of the first chord, which is a major. The third is four absolute notes away. Four, mi eight minus four is four. The minors, you could see uh, nine minus six, or six two nine, six seven eight nine, is three notes away. That's why it's a minor. And so that gives this this little worksheet gives us a lot of information. Now sometimes it's easier to see this if you represent things in a circle. This is not going to be the circle of fifths, which is another really useful tool this is just going to say i'm going to put these notes in a circle and that will give me a, a different perspective on what is actually happening here when we populate this so to do that i'm going to make a bunch of skinnies i'm going to make these skinny from uh, t and i'm going to go on over to bb over here t to bb and then i'm going to put my cursor in the cell and make them skinny all right so they're skinny and now I'm going to start. Now, this gets a little tricky because I'm going to try to make a circle in Excel, which is not natural for Excel. Excel is not a circular creation tool usually. <laughs> but I'm going to start here. This is going to be the one we're going to put at the top. I'm going to say this equals to the Greek letter of the one. And maybe I can center that. I'll say let's center it and put some borders around it. And then that is going to be equal to the note. And I'm going to say the note is going to be uh, the C here. So that's that's our first note. Let's make this, I'll make it like a, a different, I'll make it like black, white, and centered. All right, that'll be the formatting of it. And then I'm gonna go down, uh, let's see, down to like around here. And this is, let's do the here. This is gonna be the two, which is gonna be a minor, uh, number Greek number and that means it's going to be the minor so we'll build, build a minor chord around it and I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the D or 6 or D and I'll copy my formatting home tab clipboard format painter here and then here clipboard format painter there so then I'm going to say the next one let's put it down here let's put let's do this one first this is going to be the the Greek 3 and this is going to be the related note, which is an E there. Let's copy the formatting up top, home tab, format painter, and put that here. And then we'll go boom, boom, right there, let's say. This is going to be equal to the four. And then we'll say the relative note is an F. Actually, let's put the relative note above it this time on top. And so I'm going to say the relative note is this F sharp. And then let's copy this formatting here. And then I'll copy this formatting there. And then over here, we've got the five. And then up top, or we're going to put the relative note. And then I'll copy this format, home tab, clipboard, format, painter there. And then we're going to be on this side. We'll say this is going to be equal to the uh, six and equal to the note, which is going to be one uh, A. And then I'm going to say, let's copy the formatting of this one here and copy the formatting of this one there. And then this is going to be equal to uh, the seven and we're going to say that will be the B. Okay, so there it is. And now I can copy these two and format paint that here. Now, why is this useful? Let's take, if you, if you look at it this way, you can kind of get an idea of how we're building our table on this side. So in other words, you'll recall that what we did to build this table 
is we basically repeated our scale multiple times. So here's our scale C to C, and then here it repeats again C to C, and then C to C. And then we just picked whatever note that we're on and counted up every other note to build the possible chords that we might create. So we started, if we start on a C, we said two notes up is an E. Two notes up on the scale is a G. Notice I'm looking at the scale, not at the whole musical alphabet. Two notes up is a, it's not really two notes up, it's two relative notes up in the scale, not on the whole musical alphabet. But two notes up in the scale, two notes up in the scale. And then if I start on a D, then I do the same thing. I just take that and go two notes up is the F, two notes up is the A, two notes up is the C. See how we, now to do that, you kind of have to see it linear, linearly that it's repeating. You can imagine a piano that just keeps on going uh, indefinitely, although the octaves will change. So although the octaves are changing, when we talk about what creates a chord, you can have things in totally different octaves. It might sound a little weird, but you can have things that the octaves are totally different and it would still technically be a C, for example, if you had a C, E, and G in it. Whatever combination of C, E, and G you have, even if the octaves are all way different in range, you'd still call it a C, right? So you can also, it's kind of easier to see though, if you construct it this way, you could say, okay, here's the C. If I just go around the circle, if that's my root, then I skip this note and I go to the E. And that's where this one is, right? And then if I, if I, the next one, if I build my chord, I skip the next one and I go to this one, right? And then if I build my chord, I skip the next one and I go to this one. And then I go to the next one, I skip this one, go to this one. Notice what happens with the nine. You actually already went around the loop and you're kind of starting over again. So notice what's happening is you're kind of picking up the ones you didn't pick up before. And basically you're still going to end up picking up all the notes in the, in the scale, basically. Do you see what's happening? Because these are the notes in the scale and they're all legitimate notes to play, basically. And when we build a, a, when we build a, a chord around it, we usually don't want them too close together. They're already spaced out because if they're too close, we get dissonance. So we space them out. That's why we take every other note. So we're just going to say, all right, well, one reason, that's why we use every other note. But if I keep doing that, then if I get to here and I go every other note again, now I've skipped the one and I'm now I'm over here. I'm picking up the one that I skipped last time and it's now the nine. Why is it the nine? It's because we're just going around the circle and we went all the way around and now we're going around again, right? So now it was, here's the one, here's the three where we skip to here. Here's the five that we skipped to here. And here's the seven we skipped to here. And then here's the nine we skipped over here and we ended up on the two chord in, in the scale, the one that we skipped last time, right? And then if I go to the 11, we end up uh, uh, on, the, on the nine, which we skipped last time and then the 13. So you could see that we're basically, here's all the notes in the scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and we're picking up C, E, G, B, D, F, a, right? It's just that we're, when we build the scale, we, we, we go every other, every other note. All right. If we did the same thing with a D, all that's happening is we're starting here now and we're taking every other note. So then if I go to this one, that's going to be represented here. We skip a note. If I go to this one, then we went from here, skipping a note to here. And then if we do this one, we started, uh, we started at what did i start here and we skipped a note to here and then if i go to this one we started here and we skipped a note to here and then if i start here we go to here right we skipped the note and then if i do the same thing all the way around if we're on an e then we start here and then we're going to skip a note uh to go to g and so on now if you look at the intervals between these re remember that the, the intervals will be different, right? And that's why we get this. So if I, if I go back to my interval concept, uh, the, 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 the interval between this one and this one, even though I'm skipping every other note, is going to be different. So if I look at my C, we said the interval is actually four absolute notes away, meaning eight minus four 
it's four absolute notes away. But if I look at the difference between D and uh, the, the, the D and F, I'm still just skipping a note, right? So we can call that a third, but this time the distance is uh, six to nine, nine minus six, six, seven, eight, nine is three. That's why it's a minor. So, the, so we can define it in terms of absolute intervals, which we often do, which are easier to see if you look at the numbers. And we can also kind of just understand it from a position perspective as this is a major and this is a minor. And you can just memorize the positions on your fretboard of what the shape of a major and minor look like. But it's quite useful to also be able to, to number it because then you can you can easily find what you're looking for on the fretboard. So so this gives you a nice visualization of how we create how we're creating uh, this item. And instead of having uh, a linear progression that you're kind of thinking of in theory as though it goes on to infinity like this, it keeps on like a keyboard that goes on to infinity, and we can just repeat that circle. We can think of it as a never ending infinite circle because it's going around this way. We're not looking at octaves. We're just having an infinite circle and we can just keep going around the circle as we create our our notes that are going to be in uh, each of the chords. Now, once we have that, I can copy that same concept up top. So I'm now I'm going to copy from here to here and then I'm going to say control C and I'm just going to copy that same format up top and it picks up all the relative notes because all of this is geometrical, geometrically the same. So I can see it in terms of just numbers if I want to for representing a C and so on. And then if I wanted to look at other other keys like a B, the key of B is quite is often confusing to people because you have so many sharps and flats in it. But there's nothing really theoretically different from it when you look at it in terms of numbers, right? Because if you look at it in terms of numbers, then you have this, it's just another, it's, there's nothing special or different about it. The intervals are the same. If you look at it in terms of letters, wow, this looks, this looks intimidating because of all the sharps and flats. I've got to know, well, what is, do I call it a sharp or do I call it a flat? Blah, blah. Is it, is it how do I, how do I <laughs> name this thing that I'm playing? And if I look over here, it looks intimidating. But if I, again, if you looked at it just in terms of, if you just numbered it, then it, it shouldn't be inherently intimidating. I think the reason it's intimidating, it was it is to me still, is because the is because we learned because they made the musical alphabet with the C major in mind and then they plugged in these other notes, right? That that now are sharps and flats, depending on what you're gonna call them, which has its uses. Again, there's it's not like that's a totally bad thing to do because of the different ways you can spell different notes is kind of neat and, and useful, but it also leads people to think like not play a, a key of B because of all the sharps and flats and to try to explain what is happening gets a little bit um, difficult. So, but, but again, if you learn the numbers, it shouldn't be because it should be just as clean, you know, as anything else, if you think about the notes in terms of just numbering them from one to 12.